Yep, good. Cool, okay. Hey, good evening, everyone. Hi, uh, yeah. So, my topic for today is an uh, interactive dance performance with uh, Meteor.js. So, it's a collaboration between me and my girlfriend, uh, who's a dancer. So, we built this interactive performance with dance and code. So, quick introduction about myself. My name is Kelvin. And uh, well, I started my coding journey in university. So actually, I went to University of Arts London. And I went there intending to do graphic design. But along the way, I got interested in coding for one of the modules. And since then, that's become one of my passions, as well as uh, I got involved in the arts while I was there. So those were my two passions. Uh, shortly after coming back, I felt that I had to like, up my coding skills because I was self-taught in London. So I came back and enrolled in uh, General Assembly, which uh, has the Web Developers Immersive course. And I went to class with this bunch over here and my teacher, who is sitting at the corner. <laughs> So um, while I was there in London, I caught this show called The Drowned Man. And basically, it was a show which involved a lot of audience interaction. Like the performers would come up to you and grab you by the hand and uh, make you do stuff with them, dance or whatever. So I just thought that was such a great experience in art. Like how do you bring that sort of experience? I wanted to bring that sort of experience uh, of the interaction with code. So my girlfriend approached me and she said, hey, why not we do something with, which involves dance and we'll have like audience interactivity and all this combined with code. So I said, yeah, let's do something like that. So, but how are we going to do it? So we came out with, we came out with a list of uh, requirements which um, firstly, that the whole audience interaction must be available to everyone. So everyone has to access it. So the first thought that came to mind was, um, yeah, let's do it with mobile phones and let's build a website which everyone can access on the spot. Then uh, we'll require to send instructions to them during the course of the performance. So we'll send them instructions and we'll also send other activities to them, such as voting. Then we categorize the audience into two types. So we wanted to send um, individual one-to-one -one instructions. And we also wanted to send instructions to everyone as a group. And of course, all this has to take place real time as the, uh, as the show is ongoing. So before I show the next slide, let me just skip over to whatever I created. So on the left, this, sorry, left. <laughs> the left, you will see uh, the admin, which is something that I'll be controlling. And the admin consists of all these um, actions that I can send to the audience. And on the right would be the queue from the performance. So this is what the audience will be able to see. So on their phones, when they log into the website, which is mojs.meteor.com, uh, they will be able to sign in. So I'm just going to demo this really quickly. So click that. And from my admin panel, I'll be able to send them messages which, whoops, okay, hang on. Sorry, I need to refresh because I loaded this before I got connected to the internet. Which they will see the message happen on their mobile phone in real time. 
cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll also be able to take away the message from them via my screen. And uh, other interactions that we came up with was like a button. So uh, from the button, they'll be able to press it and they'll be able to play music from their phone during the performance. So we divided the performance into five sections. So at every, at every section uh, that we broke down into, there will be an audience interaction that uh, they have to make a trigger it in order for us to proceed to the next, uh, the next part of the performance. So like what I showed you just now, they are able to play music and uh, uh, we also got them to clap once, and uh, that would create, change the lighting and also um, proceed to the next part of the performance. And also send narrative text to them to describe what's happening during the show. So another one which was quite interesting was uh, we got the audience to get up and drag the dancer to an X that's on the floor. So I'm going to show you that part right now. Hey, man. <laughs> This was what was happening. And at the same time, I was sending messages to them, such as this. So they were supposed to bring, drag my girlfriend to the ex. While that was ongoing, I also um, I sent another piece of instruction, which was... So you can imagine how <laughs> confusing it got. I didn't know what I didn't expect was the audience was quite smart. They sat on the X to prevent her from being dragged onto the X. <laughs> so they're trying to drag the guy away from the X as well. It was a close call, but I think they succeeded in the end. <laughs> so yes, that's a short snippet from the show. Oops. Okay. So yes, uh, I made use of Meteor in order to create the, the interface and the interactions. That, and why I chose Meteor was uh, because allow me to send the updates real time. So they have, a, they have this thing called the data distributed protocol, which is a Meteor thing. And uh, yeah, with, including with the uh, reactive data source, it allows me to uh, send it up real time. And on top of that, it comes with a lot of uh, helpful packages. So like 
the setting up accounts was the easiest thing with Meteor because all you had to do was just uh, install the package and you have like an account system set up like instantly. And lastly, the, the last thing that really helped me with Meteor was like the super quick deployment. So all I had to do was just type Meteor deploy and followed by whatever I wanted to name it. And the, the website will be live for testing and for previewing. And at the same time, your code gets minified when you uh, upload it. So, but of course, I ran into problems along the way. And um, one thing that I did not expect was um, Wi-Fi to be an issue, because I thought since the area had a router, why not just let everyone tap onto the Wi-Fi? But I found out that um, there were, as a, result, as a result of too many connections, some people got kicked out. So I couldn't have more than like 10 for some strange reason. So I had to rely on four, the, their own 4G, but uh, there was issues with that as well, because Wi-Fi is slow in woodlands, apparently. <laughs> yeah. 4G, yeah. <laughs> so um, browser compatibility was also an issue, because I realized the, the websites appeared differently on different phones. So I had to ensure that everyone had Google Chrome browser on their phones before coming for the performance. So um, in order to send a prompt, how I'll get them to know that a prompt has been sent is through vibration. So I tapped onto the HTML5 vibration API in order to send that, to send the notification. However, it's not supported by Safari, so all the iPhone users could not get vibration. So I thought, OK, why not just use sound then? I'll use sound to get the, vi the notification across. However, it only happens on a touch end. So as in, you have to touch the device in order for sound to be triggered. I'm not sure if that's the case, but yeah. So, um, so whenever I sent, yeah, basically the notification didn't work. So I had to rely on the sound from my comm to uh, let them know that a message has been sent. Then lastly, um, uh, because of the accounts that I used, there was no like instant login. So it was quite a hassle for everyone to like sign up for an account just to get onto the system. So to wrap up whatever I um, experienced throughout this process, of, of a combination of art and code, I feel that uh, it can coexist together and uh, create like a very engaging, compelling experience for the audience. As so long as uh, you give it like some kind of meaningful use, you can't just like include it because it's a cool thing. You gotta use it to kind of create meaning for your piece as well. And uh, yeah, you should try it because it was fun and I got to experiment a lot without any barriers whatsoever. So with that, I end my talk. Thank you for listening. And questions? I don't know. Any questions for the speaker? spend more time researching on how it could be done rather than actually executing. So I think I took probably less than a month to pick it up as well as make everything happen and test it out. Yeah. Was it the first time that you tried to make Yeah, it was the first time. So yeah, I wasn't very familiar with the code and how it worked at, at a point. But yeah, it was relatively easy to pick up along the way. Anyone else? What is the next performance? Uh, we, we're not sure, we, because this is a one-off performance, but we'd like to introduce it next time as well. Yep. Yep. Uh,
Yeah, we were thinking of making it as an app, but then we, we thought like people would have to download the app on the spot. So we thought the fastest way would just be to send it as a web browser and have everyone access it on the spot. We thought that was the quickest way, yeah, and less uh, hassle for the users. No more questions? Okay, so um, before we introduce the next speaker, I think we'll do a short...